Yesterday, Andy and Emily liked the size of this Victorian terrace, but not its busy main road. The period features of this country cottage, but not the proportions of its rooms. And the style of this modern house, but not its rather unusual neighbours. New day and a new tack. They've already mentioned that they wouldn't mind buying somewhere for 150 grand and making their own stamp on it. Well, the next house has got plenty of scope for that. We're in a greenbelt area just outside Macclesfield. There are some commercial and industrial developments nearby, but it still feels rural. Semi-detached, this house in lime green has three bedrooms and is on the market for £150,000. That's 70 grand below budget. Very, very pretty setting here. It is, it's it lovely. Is lovely. Yeah. And is that good news for you or bad news for you? I've never really lived in a place as rural as this before, so I don't really know how I'd react to it. It's kind of strange. Um, I think it's superb like it. having all the fields around. I think it's beautiful. You lead away. Right, now we've got a sitting room on either side. You can pick which one you want to go into. That one, Kirsty. Now, you were probably drawn into this room because this is where the fire is. And although this is an empty house, it's been very cleverly done because it's spotlessly clean, the carpet's been taken up and the heating's been put on. And it's the best way of showing a house which has been vacant for a while. This house is much smaller than anything we've seen so far, but as it's considerably below budget, Andy and Emily could afford to build an extension. What you've got to do is stand here and open these two doors, and you've got to imagine that this room goes as far back as those two windows. OK. And the kitchen could be totally revamped, the downstairs bathroom and outside loo relocated upstairs in the new extension. You could get another room out here and another room on top. Mm -hmm. I really like the idea. I love the stone. Well, I'm a bit concerned about the surrounding area. Obviously, you've got the bus depot quite a long way, and in the far distance, you've got the landfill site. Yeah. You've got a busy road, an industrial park. If someone says, is this the right house with all those things, you'd say, no, it's not the right house. But this particular little spot and this little house is really, really pretty. Essentially, the level of work required here is not something that's putting you off. Not really. Um, it depends how much it would cost and how long it would take. Would we be actually be able to live in the house while the work was being done? I think it would. So Andy and Emily want space and they're prepared to roll up their sleeves to get it. Could our final property be perfect? It's a large red brick semi in Wilmslow, around eight miles from Macclesfield. It's on the market for £200,000. Behind, an unobtrusive commercial building backs onto this generous garden. Could it be the fantastic family home they've been dreaming of? Big big lounge. It is. It's huge, isn't it? Exactly the words that we were hoping that you'd use. We're pretty proud of this. It's just come to the market. It's got a guide price of 200000 The thing that worries me about it straight away is it's right next to a pizza shop, and I think we'd probably be too tempted every night, wouldn't we? <laughs> At the rear of the house, there's a corridor with two smaller reception rooms off it, and we've got a plan. We reckon if you remove that wall and the wall in the corridor, you would get a huge room in the back here. How big's that, Kirsty? 22 feet, 10 inches. Uh, 49. Practically 22 by 15 foot room. Palatial. Give you a, some idea about moving those walls, opening the whole thing up. You'd have changed out of £3,000. You'd be adding five times that to the value of the house, to the saleability and to the appeal of the house. Hmm, something tells me they're just not convinced. Hmm bit pink. How are we doing on this one, Annie? Level with me, because Kirsty and I love this house. We think it's a fantastic opportunity. I thought you did. I reckon it needs £20,000 worth of work on it. The one thing I would say is it's right at the top of our budget. Well, £200,000. With £20,000 worth of work on top of that, we're actually right at the top. The only other problem as well is it's very overlooked outside. Uh, absolutely right. I think if it wasn't there, the house could be 210, 220, so that's kind of taken into consideration already. I don't think it's happening here. There's no doubt it's a great opportunity. They are concerned about the office building at the back, but internally it could match the brief perfectly and come in on budget. If you're looking at a house that needs cosmetic work, it's not that difficult to get a good feeling for what it's going to cost. Break it down. A handful of phone calls and you can have a clear idea of what it would cost. So, end of day two. Do Andy and Emily like any of the houses enough to take a closer look? The top one for me, by far, is the first one. Had all the space, 
It had a good location next to the town centre. What sort of things would you like us to be considering when we're back there? Soundproofing at the front. Yeah. That busy road outside, there seemed to be a lot of noise. Any other house? I really like the one we saw this morning um, at the rural location. I'm really intrigued by it. What would you be particularly interested to find out more about? I'm a bit concerned about the landfill site. I thought it was a dead end, sort of little country lane, but there was quite a bit of traffic. Well, let's leave it there for the day. We know what we're doing in the morning. It'll be an interesting day, I think. So Andy's pumped for the Victorian townhouse that they can move right into, and Emily's been won over by the rural semi that needs some TLC. But what does £220,000 buy you elsewhere in the country? A three-bedroom barn conversion in North Yorkshire. A five-bedroom Victorian terrace with gardens in Cardiff. Or a four-bedroom detached bungalow overlooking a lock in central Scotland. But here in Cheshire, we're back to take a closer look at our rural semi in Lime Green. It's below budget at £150,000, leaving Andy and Emily enough cash to add on an extension. This morning, Phil and I have been on the telephone and we've made a couple of discoveries. Both this cottage and Park Lane do have offers on them. The offers haven't been accepted, again, in either case. Have you got any idea how much the offers actually are? We're talking about 145 for this, that's 5,000 below the 150 asking price, and again, 5,000 below the 189,950 asking price at Park Lane. Mm, interesting. Interesting indeed, but as the offers haven't been accepted, it doesn't really change things. Andy and Emily need to work out if they really want this house. We've suggested building a two-storey extension at the rear. This would give them an extra bedroom and a much larger sitting room. My main concern is some of the, you've got the dump down the road and the, the bus you've got yeah. a bit of traffic even though it's a quiet lane and it's a dead end. The landfill's over half a mile away, so it shouldn't really be a problem. And access to it isn't by the road that the house is on. But are they convinced? Having seen it again, I think I was thinking it was a bit quieter than it is, but you have got this busy road nearby. I don't think it's quite right. So back to the Victorian Terrace, our first house and still the favourite. We know there's been an offer below asking price, but we were told it hadn't been accepted. However, that's not the full story. Now we wanted to bring you to the park not only because it's close to the house and it's a very beautiful park, but we needed uh, some neutral ground. Um, a bit more news has come to light. Um, you know we're going now to have a look at the house for a second time and that this morning we found out there was an offer of below the asking price which had been made. Transpires was actually accepted, verbally accepted on Wednesday. That's two days ago. Uh -oh. Now, um, the thing about that is that the house is still being viewed, not just by us but by other people. You are being encouraged to go back and have another look. The vendor's not achieved what they're looking for and is actively still marketing it. Somewhat surprising okay. to us. If we go and see it, if we like it, if we make an offer and it's accepted by the vendor, the vendor will be gazumping the person whose offer they've already accepted. So it's not actually us that does the gazumping, it's the vendor no, that gazumps. No, the vendor gazumps. I mean, that makes me feel awful that so we might be sort of involved in that. But we do like the house. <laughs> I, I completely agree with you, Emily. Um, but rest assured, there'll be other people looking at it. So if you like it, I would be back in there having a look. I think I'd love to go and have another look at it, definitely. The house is on the market for £189,950. With four bedrooms, three reception rooms, a cellar and a garden, we think it's well worth the asking price. How does it feel to be here? It feels very quiet after the busy road, actually. Excellent. First impressions, still the same. Lots of space, mm. I really like it. All sounding promising, but what's Kirsty up to? To re-sash this in double glazing, a 4x4 four four sash would cost roughly £300. I think that's your primary concern of the house. We would want to do it upstairs and downstairs though, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. What's that? It may not be your primary concern, we may have other primary concerns. The agent told the other purchaser that we were coming back this afternoon for a second viewing and the other purchaser has subsequently come up to the asking price. Mm. Uh oh. So it looks like the asking price has been firmly accepted, but are our couple prepared to make a counter-offer? This does give me a bad feeling about the whole thing, though. It puts me off completely, really. So our next option is to 
presumably go in with a higher offer than the asking price. Yeah, if that's what you want to do. But you don't want, we don't want to pay more than it's worth. No, mm. you don't want to pay more than it's worth. If we mm. did put a higher offer in, though, how much higher do you think we should go? I doubt anything less than about 2,500, maybe as much as 3,000 would make the difference. Right. They obviously yeah. really want the house. I think they do, yes. How much do you want the house? Yeah. Do? Don't think about them, think <laughs> about yes. you. Yeah. I think let's concentrate on us. Yeah, I don't think we should. Hmm. We can think about it. I think we need a minute to think about it to tell you the truth. Do you want to go to off discuss? by yourselves? Yes, please. Okay, go on. Okay. Go on, go on, go on. we'll stay here. I've been sitting on the stairs for about five minutes, dreading coming up here and telling you this. I just rang her to be polite and say, you know... I feel sorry for them. I feel really sorry for them. I feel so really sorry for the people that, uh, you know, that, that they've been almost made to go up to the full price. Yeah. On the basis that we've been looking around and... Well, I know, mm. but we, we would have put full price in for it anyways, wouldn't we, so... Do you think... Well, it would have about ten minutes ago, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just a house mm. at the end of the day. You don't want to fight for it, then? No. I don't think it's worth it. Andy and Emily's budget could stretch to £30,000 more than the asking price, so they can well afford to put in a higher offer. But they're just not prepared to try to gazump when the house has achieved the asking price. They're walking away. I think Kirsty and I are more upset about the afternoon's events than you two are. You've taken it so well. <laughs> I think we just hide it well, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're sobbing away. <laughs> <laughs> However, Andy and Emily were so taken with the property that they couldn't let it end there. After we had time to think about it, uh, we decided that we really liked the house. Yes, so we, we went back to the agent and actually said we'd match the offer of the buyer they already had, should anything go wrong. Yeah, so fingers crossed, we might still get it.